I thank you very much for organizing this. No, no problem. How can we help? Uh, well, I have actually quite a few questions. Um, uh, okay. So one, I'm trying to sort this thing out right now. My container keeps on scrolling down, even though it's all correct size, etc. So how can I prevent the container uh, from scrolling? Uh, what do you mean by container? <clears throat> Sorry. What, what do you mean? Like, um, you Maybe don't want the screen to scroll. Yeah, if, if you can share your screen or, or send us a screenshot or something, we can... I did. I did. Can you say share your Figma screen so we can see what I mean? See that the Figma layout because it sounds a bit like there's an element of the screen which is going beyond the actual uh, well, side of the container going beyond the screen. That's probably what normally causes that. But sharing your screen would help us figure it out. Sure. Just give me a second. Thank you. I'm not sure if, how can I do it here? I haven't used this for a while. Uh, um, you have the share screen green button. Ah, uh, yeah, sure, thank bar. you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got a bit <laughs> lost. Um, so can you see? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so this is the case here, but um, I did the container and aspect ratio screen, but basically what happens is that the the white part and the next button goes up when I try it on the phone. Okay. Basically, it like it scrolls through, which I don't okay. want it to scroll at all. I want it to be stationary. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, yeah, the aspect ratio screen tag is correctly set up. At least it seems it's it's good. But I would recommend one thing, um, like all the layers you have, like the third level and below, I would ungroup them. So instead of having them in frames, I would maybe have them as either standalone text elements or whatever elements, or maybe group them. But uh, uh, I would recommend that to create the layers, the um, frames, sorry, you, you, you know what I mean? So if you uh, right click so in one of them. So these are already within the frames. And I also yes. need like the data later, so to be input. Yes. So what what we normally recommend is um, so first you have the first level layer, which is the page level layer, right? Then yeah. second level layers are always containers, so that's good. But then the things like uh, inside like third level layers and below, uh, yeah. normally we don't use the the frame component. So if, if you if you right click and I one of them in that one, for instance. Yeah. Just on page name, if, if you right click there, you, you hit ungroup. Yeah. Yeah, so that's like a better way. I mean, I don't think this is affecting it, but normally uh, we don't recommend like having that many le nested layers. Uh, the one thing I see that you might not be doing properly is that uh, you have like two flexo components. Uh, uh, so yeah. there is background data and description data, and you can only have one flexo um, on each container, and it needs to be the bottom most element. So in this case, you should you wouldn't be able to to do, to create this setup if you have just one container. You will okay. need to have several containers. All right, I see. So I basically what I need to do is split them all up in different containers. Yeah. So at least if you plan to use the flexo tag, which allows you to have like a flexible uh, yeah. text that can be longer or shorter depending on the data, then you need yeah. to have one container per flexo, and the flexo needs to be the bottommost element always, because that's how mm -hmm. that's how the container expands yeah. Uh, down. Yeah. The other okay. thing might be worth looking at is what were you using as your uh, starting frame size? I'm wondering if the aspect ratio itself is a little bit unusual. It seems quite wide. I'm not sure. I'm using 375 and 812. We normally recommend iPhone X, right? Uh, yeah, this yeah. is for iPhone X. Yeah, as, as an iPhone like X frame. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That should be okay. Maybe the problem here is the flexo, actually, uh, because uh, we don't support having more than one. We don't support having flexos not in the bottom of the container. So okay. if they are in the middle or 
you have like more elements below that it might not work as as it should okay. yeah uh, thank you i'll make a note um what about so i have other questions i'm happy like i'm the only user for now here that's fine you okay. might as well make the most of it so yeah we're, uh, we're happy yeah to have... thank you um I'm trying to do something like I haven't, I'm not going to show it now because I haven't like tried it yet, but like I tried to find information on how to do it and I couldn't really find it. Uh, is there anything like that I could use to do, uh, you know, like if you have the swipe cards like in the Tinder? Yeah. Uh, so you swipe right and then you get a certain result, you swipe left to get a certain result kind of thing. like. Is it uh, possible to do something like that or not yet? Yeah, so um, what we have now is the um, swipe component, which basically creates this effect of uh, Tinder. Uh, the thing we don't support yet is binding uh, remote actions to the swipe gesture. So uh, you would be, if you connect a list to that swipe component, you can create uh, this effect but you wouldn't be able to trigger an API call uh, for its effect. That, for that, you would need to actually let the user press a uh, UI element. So I don't know what's your use case. If you can describe it, maybe we can we can find a, a solution. Uh, I don't know, just just the swipe part, basically. Okay. Like, you know how it works in Tinder. <laughs> just like yeah. when you... For example, okay, like, but but like it's just the same principle. But like, for example, I have a question, right? And on the card that I want to swipe either right or left, and it will give me like a false or uh, or true result. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that that's the thing that that will be a bit more tricky because we don't have this option to bind remote actions to the swipe gestures. So it will just be a static list you connect from your database or whatever. And it would work kind of like a slider, but with this uh, swipe effect. Uh, anyway, if you search for swipe component in our help center, you can have a look at what we have now and, and see if it's something you can you can use for, for your case. Uh, all right, thank you. Um... What about the drag? I don't think it's available right now. Like you can't really drag around on the screen, like move elements around on the screen in Bravo. Actually, we have the sortable list uh, component, which is maybe something you maybe something similar to what you're saying. That what you can actually do now is create a list of elements and drag like drag those list elements up up and down to like. Uh, sort them in a different way. I don't know if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, like how do you actually sort them in a way? Is there an example somewhere? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's the same like, um, let me actually open the hub center. You have access to the chat, right? In, in Zoom, so I can send you the links. Uh, yeah, sure. Just one yeah, sec. Okay, this is it. So that's a sortable list and I will send you the swipe component also. Okay, Um, and also, um, <laughs> I have a quite interesting question. So like, if, um, I want to be like, have repeatable pages, like say with the same, like not the same information, but like the structure of the page is the same, right? But, um, like I do I actually need to populate all of this in Figma and connect to Airtable because the database is in Airtable or is there some automatic way like a nested database kind of thing that will allow me to put that information automatically? Yeah, so I, I don't know if you had a look at our examples, but uh, what you can do in Bravo quite easily is have a list of 
some elements and then connect a detail page to each of those elements. So you can have first the list and then be able to like with just one single page in Figma, be able mm -hmm. to display the different information for each of those items. So uh, if that's what you're looking for, then it, it is possible. Sure. Yeah, I've seen those examples. What I mean is, but I didn't uh, put the question right. What I mean is, like, for example, you have that list, right? And you select one going to detail. But if you want to go for the further detail and the further detail after that, like, oh, yeah, like okay. the next button, say, yeah, yeah, is it possible? Yeah, sure, sure. It, it is. I mean, you can have like nested categories of, of lists and, uh, and elements. We also have a few examples. But um, anyway, if, I don't know if you already started doing that but uh we can either now or uh via support help you with with your specific setup <clears throat> okay so i'd rather like access like i don't i don't have that right now but um okay then yeah. I, I would yeah i would recommend if once you start doing that if you have like any any questions or you're struggling to do something then you can contact us Yep. Okay, so, so there is no like particular example of how to structure even the air table to do that or... Yeah, so I mean, let me share with you uh, the nested list uh, resource. We, we actually have a lot of like uh, information in the help center, which sometimes is a bit hard to find, but you can use the search bar. So if you type like, for instance, nested list, then you come to this page here. And here we have actually uh, two examples, one with Airtable and one with uh, Shano, which is like a um, no-code backend tool. Uh, so hopefully that, that you can adapt these examples to, to your case. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Um, well, I guess uh, I have one more question, but I think it's more to do probably with Figma, but I'm not sure. Um, because I've set it up on Figma, but um, I don't know how to properly connect it with Bravo. Like if I have a question, right, and I have like four options and I select one option only instead of selecting a few, is it possible to do it on Bravo? Um, so you mean sort of like a um, form where you have four options and the user needs to choose just one of them? Yeah, yeah, because okay. originally in Figma, this this case, like you select few, but I managed to do it like on few screens, basically, how you can set it up in a way you only select one. Um, because like once you select another one, it changes the other state to unchecked. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I understand. Uh, we, we don't have currently that the option to select just one option among a group in that way. What we have is the drop down input element, which works like a, basically the user clicks on the drop down and then you have all the options and they select one. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the stateful inputs. So it's it, the stateful input works like a checkbox, but actually it can be the, you can customize the design. So it doesn't need to be a checkbox. It can be like actually buttons that you press. The thing mm -hmm. we don't support now is the, um, I don't know what's the technical word for that, but you wouldn't be able to let the user just press one of those elements and when they press another one, change the state of the first one. So you would be able to have like multiple selections, but uh, we don't have currently a way to do that mm -hmm. exclusive selection you can, unless you, you use a drop down. You can, you, can, you can kind of do it, um, but you have to put the logic into the back end and, and, um, you, have, yeah, and, yeah, and you have sure. to make it refresh each time. Mm -hmm. So it is mm -hmm. possible. So if your back end updates the state of the other ones and lets you refresh, you can actually do it, but it's not, we don't have it as smooth as some of the other things, as, as Javier says. But I mean, there is a workaround for that if you really need it. Yeah, there, yeah, correct. Well, all right. Thank you very much. I guess that's, that's it from me. I hope you all have more people coming in with questions. Um, I, 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 I'm actually quite surprised I'm the only one here. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, you were lucky today. Maybe we're choosing a bad time of day. Um, but the great thing is that you can always, um, you know, we can always come back next week if you've got further questions from, from what we've talked about today. Yeah. We're, trying, awesome. we're trying to do this regularly and help people where we can. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, do, uh, if I have any further questions, how can I contact let, let me, uh, I will send you our 
support email. I, I don't know how, how much time have you been using Bravo so far, more or less? Like a uh, few weeks. Okay. It's perfect. I mean, it's normal, I guess you have like many questions about the platform or even like specific features you're trying to build as, as you as you yeah. did now. So this is our support email. Uh, you can also use the community. Uh, we check the community regularly and also there are other users answering, which is useful sometimes. So so feel free to pose your questions there. All right. Well, thank you very much, both of you. Have a lovely day. Thank you for your You time. too. No problem. Thanks very much. Thanks, Colin. Um, bye. bye. Bye bye. Okay, so shall okay. I go through? That's good. We had, a, we had a user. It's always nice to help back. Good job, Javier. Thank you for that. Uh, I'll just talk a little bit about the uh, connecting to. So this, this is talking about connecting to WordPress and WooCommerce. So, yeah. uh, so obviously WordPress is a huge ecosystem. Do you know? Do you know? Do we done much with WordPress? Have you, I haven't done much myself, so I don't know about the awful lot. Mm, I, I don't think so. There, there have been people who have tried out uh, the WordPress API, but, um, but yeah, I mean, what, we, one of the one of the big problems with it is out of the box. Yeah, normally you connect in through the web because it's a web-driven thing. So. Hmm. We've, what we did is we were having a look for one of our clients of how do you connect it to WordPress, right? What's the best way of connecting to Bravo? So we had a look at a few options. And again, there's lots of different, the great thing about WordPress, there's tons and tons of plugins. What we found, yeah. I'll just share the screen right now, is... Um, what we found is the best plugin that we could use um, was the standard um, uh, wp-auth.com. So this is the, I think this is the official uh, OAuth server for WordPress. Okay. Um, and what this does is it basically provides like an OAuth to endpoint for WordPress. Yeah. So you can, you can log in. So what actually happens is, um, in Bravo, you set it up as a OAuth, standard OAuth 2 connection. Um, you install this plugin, and I think you can actually use the free version um, for, what, for connecting to Bravo. Uh, and then you get you, you create um, uh, an application, as you would in other sort of similar tools. Get your client ID, client secret, and then plug it into Bravo. And then you can then, and that then means that you can um, you can log in. Uh, to using OAuth connection from Bravo into your WordPress and get authenticated so you can then use any of the other APIs available yep. in, in, uh, in WordPress and indeed WooCommerce. So by using this plugin, it actually enables you to do access to all of that whole WordPress and ecosystem, which is super cool. So I think yep. we're gonna, we're gonna, I'll try and, I think we'll try and do a, a more detailed video on this because I think this is a really great use case for a lot sure. of people to be able to use. Sure. Yeah, there are like plenty of uh, websites uh, running on WordPress, so yeah. that could definitely be helpful. Yeah, so, I, so the main thing to remember is if you want to try and use WordPress, the, what we found best is a WP-Auth plugin of the OAuth server, the official one, um, and that should get you up and running. Um, but yeah, as you say, we'll, we'll try and do a more detailed uh, example about it in, in, in the future. Yeah, that's cool. good. Okay, I think that's everything then, right? I think we covered off all the things. So, um, yep. same time next week, huh? Same time, yeah. Let's try to do it regularly. So okay, good stuff. We have more people joining. Good stuff. Thanks, Javier. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Toby. Bye.